Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're doing well. Today we're doing a preliminary review of the Dior saddlebag. Um, I acquired this bag earlier this year and I've actually been using it very very frequently for the last little while and um, so I think it's time for me to give you guys a fair review on the bag and tell you guys what I think. So unfortunately we're having another gloomy kind of cloudy day so the lighting wouldn't be too great but at least it's a black bag so there's no kind of debate on the color or anything like that um a quick introduction so this one it is in this grain leather green calf leather and um comes in this antique very beautiful antique or age gold or however you call it a rusted brushed gold hardware so it has um the initial christian dior on both sides and then it has this pretty big, significant weight, um, pretty substantial D. Like, I think this D, I don't know, it's just for me, because like I said, I don't have a boutique in my city, so it's not like I get to go and check out these bags on a regular basis. I think I've seen these bags in person maybe one time before I actually made the purchase. Um, so it was somewhat of a surprise to me that the D was kind of large. So if you don't also get to see them before you buy, which is really not the case, um, you know, that's something that I found when I first got it. And it's just in this very, very unique saddle shape or kidney shape or horse saddle shape, however you call it. And this is in the medium size, um, or I guess a regular size maybe I should say. They also come in in the mini size as well. And it has this back pocket in the back and there's no magnetic closure or anything like that. On the leather version, I think it does have a magnet on the oblique version, the monogram canvas version, if I'm not wrong. Um, but it doesn't have any type of closure for the back pocket for the leather version. So that's essentially it. The front pocket is a magnet closure. So the magnet, I think, is hidden in this one piece of strap. So it's always kind of tricky. I, I keep pulling on the D when I try to open it sometimes. And that's not the case. You're supposed to pull on the shorter st strap or try to avoid pulling on the strap altogether because then you will start to bend this piece of metal potentially or magnet. I would recommend to just like go from where the flap is and try to open it this way. And this is the piece that's keeping it closed is the magnet. And it's just a flap kind of magnetic, uh, magnet closure. And when you open it, the opening is sort of a kind of a smaller opening as well. It's just oval shaped regular opening. Not the most easy way to access your bag, but the medium size or this regular size is definitely a lot better than the mini size I would imagine because if I find it kind of tricky with this size, it would be definitely a lot harder with the smaller size. Once you get in there, there is a zipper compartment inside in the back right here and it's black velvet like fabric line so you can't really, sorry for, for the poor lighting, you can't really see much uh, from that angle but there is a zipper which is in gold. It has the gold detail here and it has a little tab which says made in Italy, Christian Dior. Um, it says Christian Dior Paris, but so I guess that's the origin. I actually don't know if they have bags made in France as well right now, but this one is made in Italy. And then yeah, so if you look at the bottom, so the another thing about this bag is if you look at the bottom of the bag, you can tell that it's kind of divided into two compartments. So it has like, you know, it's kind of two piece placed together. They're not actually divided inside the bag, but you can definitely feel the two compartment inside. So I kind of use that as a way to organize the bag when I put stuff in, um, seems to help a little bit. And obviously because the unique shape of this bag, I don't think there's any actual like bag organizer on the market, but let me know if that's if I'm wrong. But I feel like even if there is a bag organizer on the market, I just think it would be, um, I don't know, I wouldn't think it'd be very useful because of the limited capacity inside the bag. I feel like if you add an organizer, then you're really, really limiting the space that you can actually use to put your stuff in. So I don't think it would make sense for this bag. But let me know if you have one and you recommend one, um, please do comment below. So now this bag doesn't come with a shoulder strap. Um, it doesn't come with a long crossbody strap, I should say. It has this non-detachable little leather piece strap, which then means that the bag should be just carried under, just right under your arm like this. 
and then depending on if you're right hand or left hand, you will have this CD initial on both sides, obviously. For me, I'm right handed, so this is the very natural, comfortable uh, position for me. But I guess if you are left handed, it will look like this, which I personally think might look better because then you just show off a little bit more of the bag, in my opinion, even though it is both side views. Um, but that's what it is. But the D will definitely be shown on their arm. You do cover quite a bit of the bag when you do it, when you do carry it this way. So I personally, I carry it on the handle quite often as well, at the crock of your arm, obviously. This is also a very comfortable way to use the bag. Or just on your hands. Sorry, maybe I'll back away a bit more. Like so. And, um, yeah. And the reason I've been using this bag very often is, you guys know I'm a mom, I have a young kid, I have a toddler. So this bag, the fact that it's made with antique gold and it's grained calfskin, makes it very, very um, carefree. So I don't ever really have, I, I've not baby this bag whatsoever. I've been throwing it around, I threw it in the stroller. Um, and so far, I mean, again, it's not like I've used it a ton, a ton, but I've used it to go out with her. I've kind of pushed myself to use it when I go out with my baby too, just so that I could um, give you guys a fair review of how, how it holds up. And because it's scratch resistant, I don't, there's obviously no evident scratch or wear on it. It's still very nice and new. Um, the shape is holding well as well. The glazing on it is still in perfect shape. I don't remember ever scratching it at any point, so I don't, I can't really tell you if, um, you know, if I can tell if there's anything on the hardware. I'm just examining now. There's no evidence scratch, but I'm noticing a little like mark here. Maybe I could probably like clean it. I feel like it was rubbed against something black and left a little mark there. Um, this again, I think I talk about this quite a bit, but this. Hardware really reminds me of the Gucci Marmon hardware on my belt, which is um, which does get scratched up pretty easy. Oh, that's actually right here, so I'll show you guys. I don't think it makes sense to be wearing these two pieces together because then I feel like it's just too much logo and too much gold uh, hardware going on. But look, like the the um, the finishing on both metal, it's actually quite similar. This. Um, Buckle though, I have used Brasso on it and it does remove a little bit of that antique old age look which is not ideal because if you apply it too much it becomes sort of a shiny gold which I don't personally, I don't love um, and it just looks a bit weird when it's like in between, right? So I guess, but when I do apply the Brasso, it definitely removes some of the very, very significant um, scratches on the metal. So if anything like that happened, I might just use a little bit in in some area just to reduce the look of it. Um, so I, I, I would think they're kind of very similar finishing to, to the hardware. But overall, very carefree bag because of the leather material I chose, and you guys can too. And they, have, they come in so many different colors and different material. You have them in satin even. Uh, is it in satin? They have in velvet, they have in the oblique canvas, obviously. And they also do smooth leather, so I see a lot of people going for that option as well. And obviously the green leather. This leather is, I, I personally think it's very beautiful and very carefree and it just feels very high quality. Um, and the strap, even though it's not super wide, I, but I think it's a reasonable um, width for the size of the bag. Now, because it is a full-on leather bag, this is empty bag right now. It is still pretty heavy, in my opinion. Um, but you know, I think I think it kind of speaks to the material the, uh, they use and the craftsmanship on the bag. So I never use this in inside zipper because I just find it a bit tricky. And again, it is in a very odd shape inside, so it's not an even like rectangular rectangular shape where you can put in a card holder. It's really like a weird kidney shape um, in our pocket, but I guess if you have change or something like that. I don't feel like a lot of people still use use change anymore, but if you have anything like that, knickknacks, you can put into that small compartment. Um, okay, so let's do a what fits in here. And I have not been uh, had any issue fitting my everyday essential in this bag. Um, but I've only been kind of carrying the bare minimum, so I will show you guys what I normally carry and then we can try to squeeze in a few other things and see if they will fit. 
Um, yeah, and then I'll show you guys some mock shots. So, um, the phone, this is an iPhone 8, which is the same as a 10. This is my work phone actually, so I'll just put it in the side here. And because the size of the bag, you can actually do it vertically and it still fits pretty well. So that's what I'll do. And you can do in use this back back compartment if you like. And then I use my card holder, put that on just right on top of it. And my mirror, the hand sanitizer, obviously. And it's good that most of these items, you could still fit them by sitting them uh, vertically, which saves, um, saves a lot of space in my opinion. And then the shorter items, like your lipsticks and your lip gloss, you can put them in on the side with where the length is a bit shorter your hand cream. Again, I'm not doing it super organ in super organized way. I just throw them in just so that realistically you're not gonna like be very careful when you're throwing an item into your bag. This is the keys, like a roughly just so all that it's still no problem whatsoever. Your earphones. Again, I haven't really used my earphone for some time now to be honest. I just have that here so we guess so we can all see whether it will fit or not. That seemed to be okay. And then the floss. I like to bring a floss with me when I go out. Although that's when we were still able to go to restaurants and things like that. A travel size painkiller. Those are always good to have. And I also have my um, notebook and my card holder, but I don't think these items will actually fit in there. I will really have to play Tetris if I do wish to put them in. I feel like there is, with this bag though, there is a lot of unused space. So that's another thing. It's like I feel this piece here is definitely empty. Over here is empty. So I feel like it's very, very difficult to maximize the capacity of the bag, even though it might be space somewhere. But if you want to actually make it usable, it's not super easy to place them in the right place. Um, place things in the right place and then I often use the back pocket for the phone and the mask But for the purpose of today's video, I'll just show you guys you can just put in the mask in the back Obviously if you want it to be a little bit more sanitized do use like a zip ziplock bag and anything like that But I think it's a good spot for a mask you can even if with a regular Those uh, reusable or non sorry non reusable ones. This is a good space for that And yeah so with everything packed inside, it's getting quite heavy, in my opinion. Um, but I think, you know, it's still a really nice overall kind of capacity for a bag like this. Okay. Sorry, I'll do also other ways of wearing it. So I think um, with this bag though, I will have to say like it's not a bag that I would recommend for everybody. So I often, you know, will have other bags and I'll say do I recommend it, do I not? This is not something that everyone would actually appreciate or think it looks nice. Um, I think a lot of people, um, initially when this was coming back, a lot of people were resistant, they weren't sure whether it's nice. And then slowly, because um, you know you start to see more and more on Instagram, a lot of influencer and YouTubers and Instagrammers they start to um, use it. And um, I, I personally got influenced quite heavily by it as well. I also was not super sure about this bag, but then a few of my um, uh, the few of Instagrammer that I follow, they also own this bag, and they, I can t see that they use it for their daily outfit or at least their post very often and I do really like how it's being carried and how um, how um, they, it, it matches with people's outfit so I decided to go for it and I have no regrets and like I said I didn't actually have a lot of chance to see it in person and try it on uh, for myself before I made the purchase but I'm glad I got it before the price increase Obviously, I have to be honest, it was a little bit of pressure buy just because we heard the rumor that Dior prices were going up. So I um, definitely, um, you know, was influenced by that a little bit, but I don't, so far, I definitely don't regret the decision. It's actually one of the ones that I think are, it's still priced pretty low in comparison to a lot of other bags that's like 
sort of trendy and um, uh, popular from the luxury brand name. So, you know, if you compare the price point of this one to like Chanel and even other Dior bag, like Lady Dior bag, this is actually priced quite fairly. This bag is priced lower than the Mini Lady Dior, so I feel like that could give you a general sense of, um, of the pricing. So personally, I think the price point is okay. Um, for the longest time, I was kind of hesitant about the purchase because I always wanted to buy it for the crossbody look because I've seen those, um, I've seen a lot of people wearing it with the big guitar strap and I love that. And you guys know, you might know or might not know, but the strap itself, it's about a thousand dollar or more sometimes. So I was like, uh, I like it because that strap and then, you know, I don't know if I want it without the strap and all that. So, um, and then I, I later on I saw some reviews where they're saying the hardware on the strap will actually scratch the hardware of the, the initials here. So then I was hesitant so with, with getting the strap or not getting the strap and I feel like if adding the strap then the price on this bag is a bit too high for my liking. So all that to say is I went ahead and decided to buy it without the strap and I still, I, I love the look without the strap as well and personally thinking it's still quite usable. So okay, let me just take out the st stuff and then I'll give you guys some concluding kind of points on, on this bag. Sorry, it's a little bit st scattered today. Um, so you have your travel size pin killer, your floss, your hand sanitizer, very important. Your hand cream. Um, some uh, earphones, earphone air plugs. Lipstick, another lip product. Phone, and your car keys and home keys. I just don't have anything on today, but that's the keys. And I also have my compact mirror. It's quite a bit. And my card holder that's actually fully packed. So it's a, you know, we're, this is my actual heart card holder that I'm holding right now. And that's it. So like I said, it's quite very, very reasonable for a bag to be holding this amount. And it's, you know, definitely um, sufficient for your daily essentials. If you want to uh, carry a little bit more than this, um, you can definitely play with it a little bit. Like I said, I, I did just throw everything in. I didn't really try to maximize the space of the bag. I do feel like there were like room that I didn't actually use up just now. Um, so my, sorry, I was getting to the point that if you never really appreciate the look of the style of this bag, then I would say don't get influenced because it is very unique. And I would have to say, some people say that this, you know, the history already told us it's a trendy bag. So it was trendy a long time ago and they sort of died and then it's coming back slowly. I have people who said they regret so much because they let go of this bag for like a couple hundred dollars. Um, the vintage look, the vintage version of it. And now they go for thousand, two thousand dollars um, in a great condition. So people were regretting that. Which, which could potentially mean that this won't be a long lasting bag um, moving forward anyways. But personally, I love the look of it. I think this new, they made some new edits to it and they will again in the future like any other bag. Even if you look at Chanel Classic Flap, over time they will introduce slight changes so that um, you know the vintage version will still always be somewhat slightly different. So I would assume this bag will go through the same evolutions in the future. Um, but at this point, very happy with uh, the price that I paid and with um, just the overall craftsmanship. I can feel like it's a very durable, sturdy bag and I can um, count on using it for the, for the years to come. So that's, that's my first point is that if you don't love the look of the bag, then don't get influenced. Just, just move on. Um, and there will always be other bags that you, <laughs> that you can wonder about in the future. And then the ne next point that I find a little annoying for myself is this opening flap. So it, sometimes it does get caught like, like right like this, just within the C, and then it kind of just like, you have to really maneuver it so to close it properly, and it still doesn't, and you have to like figure out where the magnet is. So I do find the strap, uh, this flap, 
to be a little annoying but I do do understand that's just the way that it's designed so you know I'll learn to love it I guess so see it does often do this and then to my other point is this this piece tend to hook on to a lot of my sweaters you guys know I love my chunky sweaters and this C hook it just like gets caught into different things like could I don't know what it is like onto my coat and onto other things it just seemed to be get hooked into other things very easily um, so I don't know about that and I same thing with um, just what I mentioned earlier like if you do want to install a strap onto these um, different pieces again it's a bit tricky on where you actually want to attach your strap to it could be the D it could be the C like it's not I guess when they designed it, even though they promote on their website that you could attach to a strap to it, it's not super, um, it's not really designed to be used with a strap, right? Like I feel like over time, not only it will damage the hardware, but I think just in overall design, it's not very, um, it's just not super friendly when you have the strap on. Not only that, once you have the strap on, this little piece of, because it's not detachable, it's kind of like just sticking in weird places. It doesn't really fall to the front or to the back. So most other um, uh, handbags that are meant to be used like top handle plus a crossbody strap, the handle is adjustable so that you could either let the handle fall in the front of the bag or in the back. Whereas this one, because of the CD design, it's very fixed so you have this weird piece of leather that just does random things when you're holding a crossbody it would just like be sticking like this or sticking like this or you know like or or weirdly like i don't know it just doesn't doesn't look right like if you look carefully to a lot of those instagram pictures where people use a crossbody i think they have to kind of tuck it in behind them to hide it sometimes or it just kind of sits here in weird positions so for all those reasons, so I really look at a lot of details before I actually decide to just forego the strap for this bag. Um, so for that reason, I feel like, you know, if I really need a crossbody bag, I have tons of other options before I really must spend another thousand dollar and get frustrated by where to place the strap and get frustrated with all the scratch, uh, scratches on the hardware. So anyways, decide to pass on that. So those are some of the tiny flaws that I've, um, that I've noticed or I've considered um, before I made my purchases. But while using this bag though, I have no overall, no com no complaints. I mean, it is a not, uh, it is not a crossbody bag. So as a mom, I, I always mention this as a mom, crossbody is always the easy easiest way. But at the same time, I do concern with like my daughter scratching my bag or scratch damaging the bag. So I like for my Lady Dior or even my Chanel 19, I kind of try to use them when I'm not with her. Um, but I will be using my 19 a bit more, so I hope to do that review soon for you guys as well soon. But with her, with this bag, like I said, I never have to worry. I just bring it with me. I carry it like this with me, so she is able to touch the bag, but there's never any issues. When I carry, when I try to push on, I push her on the stroller. I do find it heavy if I'm carrying like this on my on my arm. So I usually put it over here. Now when I have big coats and big sweaters. It does sit okay, but I feel like it sits well is because um, the weight of my upper arm is on the bag itself. So I do like push like this and I feel like I'm using my arm self-consciously like trying to hold it in closer to my body so that it won't slide down. But it's not, I, I have to say I find it fairly secure on my shoulder and I personally have pretty small shoulders. So I think it does generally stay pretty well on your shoulder. So I push it like this on the stroller and I do find it that um, over time I worry that it will affect the shape of the bag because I do feel like there's a lot of pressure and force um, pressing down the bag and I don't know if over time it will start to cause any like curving on the top or start to compress the bag a little too much. But generally speaking I think it's pretty cool that it's designed this, like this so that even if there is some weight on the bag shouldn't affect too much I feel like so you can press it down it's probably a good bag if you want to also pack in your luggage to travel with I feel like you know not not like any of your other like regular shape bag you you'll be worried about pressing it but I feel like this one is not too bad um anyways let me know if you have stories of um that your saddlebag getting deformed 
I would love to know that so I can be more careful with it. But overall, I think it's really cool. Um, the like slight curved design on the top, I think that's very unique. Just overall, I think it's just a very unique um, stand, like it stands out and it's very, very well made. Um, the hardware and the leather combination that I chose, it's classic, it goes with everything. So I, um, I just, yeah, I've been very um, happy with it and been reaching for it very often. I recently posted on my Instagram a picture of me using this bag with my just regular sweats and lounge wear. I even think that could work. So I feel like it's definitely a bag that you can dress down and dress up. So um, uh, also something that suits my style very well. Yeah, I think I've said enough. Um, so personally, if you um, have similar taste and similar kind of um, outfit inspirations or similar outfit um, look than me, then I think this bag could work really well for you. Um, if you follow a lot of Instagrammer who are using this bag, I do think black is one of the very common, common ones that I see personally. Um, I was also very into their tan color, but at the time I couldn't find one that I actually liked, so went ahead and get the safer choice and I'm being really, really happy with it. I hope this was somewhat helpful and not too, um, too much info, too much useless info, I hope. Um, but if you have any specific questions, please let me know and I will probably um, feature this bag in a lot of my other Instagram posts. So, um, at some point I could probably do a styling video with this bag as well if you like. But in the meantime, if you have any other questions, please leave, please leave me a comment and I will talk to you guys soon. Bye!